Most reefers do consider foods as a pollutive substance. What goes in must come out in some way or accumulates in the tank perpetually. What they don't think about is pollution as a poison. Another part of this that almost no reefer thinks about is those vitamins and mineral premixes in our foods or the fact that there's zero chance that they're added in the exact rate that our fish and coral uptake them in, so whatever imbalance there is will ultimately build up in the tank. There's a group of pollutants or poisons that may take many months to cause a problem, yet totally avoidable. This is basically every biologically active element at the wrong level. I'm gonna use copper as an example because it's in most foods and most reefers believe that it isn't good for a reef tank, this applies to many other elements or minerals in our foods as well. What most reefers don't know is copper's not a poison. Copper's an essential element for a coral's biological processes like energy metabolism, reactive oxygen species detoxification, iron uptake, and cellular communication. Stripping out all of the copper would be seriously detrimental to the tank. However, that's at the right level. Once copper gets too high, too high in this case being barely measurable with our test kits, copper becomes a poison and causes all kinds of problems. In this study, they found that sea fans initially launched an immune response to a damaging infection at low levels of copper and temperature stress, but when copper concentrations were boosted, sea fans' immune system response failed, which suggests that copper stressed the sea fans and eliminated their immune potential. Now that's not acutely poisonous. That's the inability to deal with normal stresses. Pollutants like poison or copper or other biologically active elements are the kind of thing that rounds to zero reefers correctly identifying as the cause of poor health or mortalities in a reef tank because it's human nature to focus on something that we did yesterday or last week as the most likely cause, not something we started six to 18 months ago like fish food. In this study on the subcellular effects of copper on zoanthids, they found the normally flexible bodies contracted and became rigid. The zoanthid tissue revealed that the copper had caused subcellular changes to the proteins within the tubular body. Collagen increased thickness to five to seven times that of the controls. A decrease in net photosynthesis was observed at what they described as the highest copper concentrations. But their highest copper concentrations was also around the lowest readable range of our hobby test kits. You can see why it would take a pretty advanced or informed reefer to correctly identify this as the problem, but in reality, it's that type of reefer that would likely avoid this altogether with good filtration practices that we'll describe today. The tricky part in this is copper and some other elements you can't necessarily test for accurately, even with ICP, because copper gets bound up in organics as well as bioaccumulates within the animal's tissue where it builds up until it interferes with its biology and those built up levels within the tissue start to cause a problem. Now that's copper just used as an example, but what we're talking about is every biologically active element in the food that's required for healthy biology, but also builds up over time when it's not added in the exact ratio that the various animals utilize them in, which is near impossible. This is all a very real potential contributor, that mystery called old tank syndrome, where the tank is stable and thriving until one day it isn't. This knowledge requires an evolutionary leap from just seeing is believing and only acting on what our eyes can see to knowledge is believing and implementing methods that avoid issues altogether, rather than trying to catch them and identify challenges that are simply unrealistic to guess correctly. Good news, the solutions are simple and likely things that you're already doing. A skimmer pulls out not just nitrogen and phosphorus, but also everything in the uneaten fish food or waste that it captures. Frequently changed filter socks and roller mats will do the same thing. If either catches half the waste before it breaks down and removes it from the tank, they push what would be a problem in 18 months of additions out to 36 months, but combined with other good practices, it may be years or even indefinitely, but they do need to work well and be maintained to do that. A good water change schedule can do that for many pollutants as well. Hamza's Reef has a cool tool called Effect of Water Change Calculator. For instance, if I had a 100 gallon tank and each month added 0.1 parts per million of some unknown contaminant and did zero water changes, at the end of four years or 48 months, it would end at 4.8 parts per million, which with many of the contaminants we're talking about today would be poisonous. But if I did 10 gallons or 10% monthly water changes, it would rise rapidly for a year, but then slow down dramatically and cap out at about 0.9 parts per million. How if I did a 20% change every month, it would rise rapidly for six months where it would slow down and then cap out at only 0.4 parts per million. And if I did a 40% monthly change, it would never rise over 0.1 parts per million added each month, even after four years of addition. You may now better understand why we suggest 1.5% daily, 10% weekly, or 35% monthly, which are effectively similar as being near ideal water change schedule for most reefers and what we do on the tanks here at 52 SE. However, what skimmers, rollers, and water changes don't cover completely is the bioaccumulation effect. 
can't remove it if it's bound up in the coral's tissue. However, keeping the levels low with those tools will greatly reduce what the corals can accumulate and may make it a non-issue in any realistic time frame. But there are other filters like algae scrubbers and refugiums that are living organisms that also bioaccumulate unhealthy metals, copper, or potentially toxic elements into their cellular structure where it is not available to the corals. You can grab a handful and effectively export it from the tank. So regardless of where you're at with your tank, just starting or years in, understanding these mechanisms are the reason why best practice filtration and maintenance like water changes or algae export produce much higher percentage results. Haven't been perfect about it? Not a big deal. Start now and stop the progression and coral growth will be your solution to diluting what's already been bioaccumulated in the coral's tissue.